Last Sunday, in the most hyped showdown of the 83 season, Dallas intended on hosting a necktie party with Washington serving as the guest of honor. Instead, it quickly became obvious it was the Redskins who would have the Cowboys swinging from the end of a rope. Joe Theismann's touchdown pass to tight end Clint Didier gave Washington a quick 14 to nothing lead, at which point a hostile Redskin defense went on the warpath. Washington's most prized scalp of the day was that of Dallas running back Tony Dorsett, who gained only 34 yards on 14 carries. When the Cowboy running game proved helpless, Danny White in the passing attack came to the rescue. Doug Cosby's touchdown catch tightened the score to 14 to seven. But unfortunately for Dallas, on this particular Sunday afternoon, not even the Duke could have saved this bunch of cowfolks from the skid. Art Mug's 40-yard score helped boost Washington to a 31-10 win, their most convincing regular season victory over Dallas in the history of the rivalry. On such a momentous occasion, the Redskins had no intentions of letting anyone stand in the way of their fun bunch. Quarterback Cliff Stout has been having a good time of his own this season, leading the Steelers to the playoffs. However, now that Terry Bradshaw is back, the party's over. In his first appearance since last year's postseason tournament, Bradshaw promptly proved he hasn't lost his stuff. A first quarter touchdown pass to Greg Garrity verified that Terry can still make a defense look bad. Bradshaw's second touchdown pass gave the Steelers a 14 to nothing lead. But when he re-injured his elbow and was forced to leave the game, Stout showed the demotion to backup hadn't affected his ability. In New York's final game in Shea Stadium, the Steelers handed them a humiliating 34 to seven defeat. Jet fans weren't pleased about the loss. However, next year's move to the Meadowlands is a little tougher medicine to swallow. In 1983, Earl Campbell, the Tyler Rose, has felt surrounded by weeds. A 1-13 record has given the big fullback little to smile about. But against Cleveland, his teammates helped turn his frown upside down. Wide receiver Steve Bryant's touchdown pass to number 83. Wide receiver Tim Smith put Houston on top 10 to three. Smith, who caught seven passes for 150 yards, became the first Oiler in nine years to go over 1,000 yards receiving. Houston has been the league's biggest pushover this season, but with the help of kick returner Steve Brown, number 24, the Oilers finally pushed back. Brown's 93-yard touchdown gave Houston a 24-6 second quarter lead. While the Oilers' offensive outburst was surprising, their defensive ineptness was not. Cleveland came back against the NFL's most generous defense. Unfortunately for the Browns, they fell victim to a greedy Houston attack. Oliver Luck's second touchdown pass to Tim Smith midway through the final period lifted the Oilers to a 34-27 win. 
Although the loss put a damper on the 8-7 Browns' postseason chances, slim playoff hopes are certainly better than none at all. After 10 years in Miami, quarterback Don Strock has earned the reputation as the game's premier relief pitcher. Last Sunday, as a spot starter against the Falcons, Strock took over for Dan Marino and completed 78% of his passes, including two scoring strikes to Joe Rose and Tony Nathan, number 22. It was only the 19th time Strzok has started a game for the Dolphins, and he led the AFC Eastern Division champs to a 31-10 fourth quarter lead, with plenty of help from receivers like Mark Duper, number 85. Atlanta woke up in the final period, but their wake-up call came far too late. Fullback William Andrews, number 31, pirouetted his way through the Miami defense for 222 total yards. But he could not prevent the 31-24 loss that left the Falcons in last place in the NFC West. A win for the AFC West champion Raiders would have guaranteed them the home field advantage in the playoffs. But after Los Angeles built a 24-7 lead, their get-up-and-go got up and went. Linebacker E.J. Jr., number 54, led a St. Louis charge that shut out the Raiders in the second half. The Cardinal defense produced six sacks, forced four turnovers, and scored a touchdown of their own. Defensive tackle Elo Grooms, number 78, rumbled 40 yards with a Jim Plunkett fumble for the first of four consecutive Cardinal touchdowns. A final scoring pass from Neil Lomax to Pat Tilly finished off the Raiders 34-24. The wins by San Francisco and New Orleans eliminated the Cardinals from playoff contention. Detroit Lions set out to bag the Cats from Cincinnati and clinch their first division championship since 1957. But the NFL's number one defense put out a clothesline and hung the Lions out to dry. The Bengal defense held Lion running back Billy Sims to under 100 yards for the first time in five games. With Sims drawn and quartered, Cincinnati quarterback Ken Anderson added a fresh dimension to the quarterback draw play. Good for 15 yards. Anderson was knocked out of the game on the play, but his run set up the first of two Pete Johnson touchdowns that were all the Bengals needed to down the Lions 17-9. Detroit can still take the NFC Central title with a win this week, while the Seattle Seahawks needed to win their final two games to have a shot at a wild card spot. In the Meadowlands, the Hawks met little resistance from the New York Giants. turned the ball over five times and Seattle cornerback Dave Brown number 22 recorded one of two Seahawk interceptions to set up the first of two David Craig scoring passes. The 
playoff hopes of the Seahawks are still up in the air, but one thing is certain. With a 17-12 loss, the Giants clinched undisputed possession of last place in the NFC East. A visit to Buffalo in December doesn't usually bring a smile to one's face, but it didn't really matter last Sunday whether Joe Montana was just feeling funny or just being cool. As far as the Buffalo Bills were concerned, their game against San Francisco was no laughing matter, and they took immediate steps to wipe Montana's smile from his face. Bill sacked Montana five times and limited the 49er offense to just two field goals in the first half. But while Montana's grin may have been gone, his grit and determination were still very much in place. Montana rallied the 49ers from a 10 to 6 halftime deficit, leading them on scoring drives in their first two second half possessions. On the day, the NFL's all-time top-rated quarterback completed 18 of 28 while also setting a San Francisco single-season passing record for yards gained. The 49ers enjoyed the last lap on the Bills as their 23-10 victory further enhanced their NFL playoff hopes while virtually pushing the Bills to the brink of elimination. In Philadelphia, the Saints rediscovered an offense that disappeared a week before in New England as Kenny Stabler hit on 14 of 15 first half passes, including this 21 yard touchdown toss to number 30, Wayne Wilson. Wilson had a hand in both New Orleans scores, on the receiving end of Stabler's pass and on the escorting end for George Rogers' third period touchdown. The Saints built up a 17 to three lead, but it failed to ruffle the feathers of the birds of Philadelphia. The Eagles have played the rest of the league like eager contenders for a high draft choice. But against teams from the NFC West, they have been terrors, owning victories over the 49ers, Falcons, and Rams. When Ron Jaworski hit Harold Carmichael on this tying touchdown late in the fourth quarter, the Eagles seemed set to make it a clean sweep of four. But a missed Tony Franklin field goal in the final seconds of regulation gave new life to the Saints' first ever playoff drive. Five minutes and 30 seconds into overtime, Morton Anderson, who had already connected for a 52-yarder, cleanly booted a 50-yarder through the crossbars to give New Orleans a 20-17 victory. It was the third time this season that Anderson had kicked a last second or overtime game-winning field goal. The Saints are only one victory away from being this year's version of a Cinderella team. But when Cinderella stories are written about the 1983 season, the Saints may very well take a back seat to the continuing soap opera saga of John Elway, the Baltimore Colts, and the Denver Broncos. The first Elway-Baltimore duel in the Sun was a decided draw. The Colts lost their first game against Denver, but it was not Elway who beat them. Last Sunday in Mile High Stadium, the Colts came out determined once and for all to make Elway pay for his springtime spurning of Baltimore. With this Mike Pagel to Bernard Henry 40-yard scoring strike plus four Raul Alegre field goals, the Colts took a commanding 19-0 lead into the final period. This was merely a prelude to some fourth quarter fireworks in the sky, set off by the man labeled the franchise in Denver. A touchdown strike to number 84, Clint Sampson, was the beginning of a furious Bronco comeback that continued six minutes later when Elway escaped a blitz just in time to find Jesse Miles for this 26 yard score. On the day, Elway completed 23 of 44 passes for 345 yards and three touchdowns, his third coming with just 44 seconds remaining. For Gerald Wilhite and the Denver Broncos, there was a good cause for jumping for joy. The Broncos' 21-19 victory sealed an AFC wildcard berth, marking Denver's first appearance in the playoffs since 1979. 
For John Elway, well, in one quarter of play, he managed to silence some critics, stick it to the Colts, and secure a place in the playoffs in his rookie season, all of which were good reasons for him to be smiling. In some respects, the playoff road is a lot like this lovely young lass with the flaming batons. One key slip up and you're in deep trouble. In the season's 15th week, the Rams found themselves right in the heart of the playoff fire. And against New England, they came out smoking. Number 84, George Farmer singed the Patriots secondary for a quick 7-0 lead. And then Los Angeles, like a mighty comet, shone brightly and then burned out. When a team commits seven turnovers, they simply will not win football games. The Rams did turn the ball over seven times and did not win a very important game. Number 30, Mosi Tatupu scored three touchdowns, all resulting from Ram mistakes as the Patriots won 21 to seven. Both New England and Los Angeles can make the playoffs, but both must win their final game to have a shot. The Minnesota Vikings and Chicago Bears are out of the playoffs, but it didn't stop them from putting on one heck of a show last Sunday. Matsui's touchdown pass to Walter Payton helped highlight a 19-13 Chicago win, a win that meant that the Vikings would not make the playoffs for only the fourth time in 16 years. Jim McMahon's flip to Emery Moorhead was a more conventional score for the Bears, but late in the game, a Hail Mary gave the Vikes a shot at a dramatic win. Less than two minutes left, Minnesota failed to score from six yards out as their sixth loss in seven games was a frustrating microcosm of their season. San Diego and Kansas City will be watching Super Bowl 18 on television. But if you were munching popcorn and viewing this game, you saw the highest scoring, most wide open battle of all last Sunday. Number 80, Kellen Winslow caught 14 for 162 yards, but it would take 79 points, 55 first downs, and over 1,000 total yards of offense to decide this one. San Diego blew out to a 24 to 14 lead, and then Bill Kenny got a hot hand. Carlos Carson caught seven passes for 165 yards. But if you want to hear some staggering stats, check out Bill Kenny's. 31 of 41 for 411 yards and four touchdowns, as he very quietly became only the fifth quarterback in NFL history to pass for 4,000 yards in a season. Early in the third period, Kenny gave his arm a breather and let Theotis Brown, number 27, rumble 49 yards to cut the Charger lead to three. With both defenses in the locker room and Dan Fouts hurt, Ed Luther took over and hit Wes Chandler to give San Diego a 38-24 third quarter lead. Less than two minutes left, and with both defenses on the team bus waiting to leave, Kenny hit Willie Scott to tie it at 38.
Finally and mercifully, Rolf Benershka jammed a field goal through to end the track meet in San Diego's favor, 41 to 38. So an end came to a scintillating football game and to the season's 15th week. One more week of action in the final 10 will all be selected to square off in the playoffs on the road to Tampa Bay.